Hello everyone. As you can see, we're getting back to work on the two-door sedan. In this video, I'm going to install the vinyl top. Now, a lot of you have asked over the years for an instruction video on how to install the vinyl top on the typical Model A closed car, and now I have the example to do so with. For those of you watching who may not be familiar with Model A's, most closed cars had some kind of black vinyl roof insert on them, and the two-door sedan is a good example. The entire top and sides are wrapped in vinyl. On some Model A closed cars, the entire roof was wrapped in vinyl, like some four-door sedans, some Victorias, and the 2029 Special Coupe, among others. Making and installing the tops for those is a completely different story from this. Now, this isn't necessarily an instruction video on how to do it yourself. This is more of just to give you a general idea of what's involved. Now, the way I do it may not necessarily be the best or only good way. This is just how I do it. So anyway, let's get started. For this, we got a complete do-it-yourself kit. I don't know what supplier this came from, but they all sell them, and they're all the same, as long as you order the right one for your car. As I've mentioned quite a bit in the past, I don't like ready-made kits for tops or interiors, but this doesn't really count because nothing's pre-made on it, it's just raw materials cut to length. So let's see what we got. First thing to do is examine the wood and make sure it's good enough to hold a new top. I'm going to skip that step because we've already replaced all the roof wood on this. But as a general rule, this is how I do it. I take a piece of top material and nail it to the wood where the top nails to. Then I pull the material to try to pull the nail out. If I can't pull the nail out, that usually means the wood is still usable. If I can pull the nail back out, it's probably not going to hold a new top. But keep in mind, this is a general rule and doesn't necessarily guarantee anything. Next we look over the surface to see anything unusual that may cause a problem. Now some of these screws are sticking up a little too high and they could poke through the material so I'll have to trim some of them down. Some of them are okay. This one up front is way too high up and this is bent out of shape a little bit so I'll try hammering that down and see if I can fix that. On the two-door sedans, this part of the roof that goes over the door is a separate piece from the rest of the body, and they were spot welded together originally. And it's not uncommon for these spot welds to break and for this part to detach. In fact, you may remember the left side had that problem. I had to weld it back together. Now, when these break, they can get out of alignment and you can see a step here, even with the top material over it, and we didn't want that. Now, like I said, this side was still good, but it was still a little bit lumpy around here, so we're using a little filler to smooth it out. If you look at archive photos of these cars when they were new, this was smooth. There was no noticeable line here at all, so they fit pretty good when they were new. Well, the good news is, since there's a layer of padding and a layer of vinyl that goes over this, once you sand the filler in like 40 grit, that's it. It's good to go. You don't have to worry about scratches or pinholes or anything like that. This needs a little more work and then it will be ready to go. The rest of the surface is pretty good. There's no big dents or lumps in it at all, so I shouldn't need anything else. Now it's time to install the chicken wire. Now this is what we took off the car. Now the top had already been replaced fairly recently, so this stuff is like new. So I'm just going to reuse it. And 
and that's done. Now I installed it with these double pointed tacks. And that's what they look like. That's pretty much what they were held on with originally. And they work pretty well. Now, it's important to make sure these ends are not sticking up. So I've got to go around here and make sure none of them are. Also, this should be reasonably snug when it's done, which this is. So we can move on to the next step. So this is what we got in the kit. This stuff, a layer of padding, and top material. And the instructions recommend installing them in that order. And now I've got the padding on. Now the instructions read to nail it down and cut it out to the general shape, which I did. And then it said to leave it that way. Well, here's the thing. The top material gets nailed down here. If I nail the padding on here, then the material's going to stick up in between where the nails are. And, like around the back, there is wood back here to nail it to, but if but if I nail it back here, the material's going to have a low spot where that is. So I'm going to do like I usually do. I'm just going to leave it like this, nail the vinyl on top of it, and when it's time to nail the vinyl on permanently, I'm going to lift it up little by little, and then just cut the padding out just shy of where it nails down. When I'm done, there won't be any nails holding the padding on, but the vinyl will hold it in place just fine. And now I have the top material nailed down. Just a few nails here and there. Now before nailing it down, it's important to make sure the grain is running straight front to back, not at an angle. It's also important, especially in this car, to make sure it's centered on the body. Because on, because on the two-door sedans, because the vinyl goes all the way down the side of the top, this material is just barely wide enough to go over the edge on both sides. So if it's off-center a little bit, it could be a problem. Now because the roof has a slight curve to it, when you move the top material down, it doesn't lay down flat. It's got these wrinkles in it. Now the way we'll get that out is we're going to stretch out the middle of the top and that'll tighten all this up. Basically, what I'm going to do is tack it down on one side and pull it really tight and tack it down on the other side. Now the best way I've found to do this is outside on a warm sunny day as the sun will warm up the material evenly pretty well and then it will be really easy to stretch. It doesn't need to stretch all that much, just enough to put a little tension in it. And now it's still tacked on temporarily, but pretty much have it in place. It looks pretty good right now. I could probably nail it down permanently like this, but I'm going to leave it out here in the sun for an hour or so, and then come back and adjust it a little, and see what we have then. 
it's some time later. I adjusted it quite a bit and attached it with more nails, and it's looking pretty good. So next we'll move on to installing it permanently. As you can see on the edge here, it's like I said, if you nail it on with the padding on it, the material will stick out between the nails. And you can add more nails in it and that would help, but it would still be like this. So what I'm going to do now is, a little bit at a time, I'm going to peel the vinyl back, cut the padding down to where it's about here, and then nail it back down. Now these tacks, I'm only nailing them in about halfway down, so they hold, but they're easy to remove. And then I'll hammer them all the way in when it's time to install it for good. It's a few days later. I've trimmed this out, hammered the nails all the way down, and I actually had to add several more of them to smooth this out, but it looks pretty good now. So now it's time to install the gutters and the trim. We're going to reuse the original gutters, reason being there's not really anything wrong with them. So we cleaned them up and primered them. Now this part goes on first, it nails on, and then this snaps on over that. Now, these will get pretty beat up trying to snap them on, which is why we didn't paint them yet. We're going to paint these after assembly. In between this and the top material, we're going to have to seal it. Now, this is the sealer that came with the kit. It's, it's okay stuff. It's decent quality but it's not really a top sealer material. It's pretty difficult to work with. So I use this stuff, which I got at Home Depot. It dries with a satin black finish, which blends well with the top material, if any of it is visible, and it's a lot easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do. And now we'll install the trim for the back and the front of the top. Originally, this had a steel molding, but the ones that were on this are pretty far gone. We can't really save them. And they're pretty difficult to install anyway. So unless we're going for authenticity, the thing to do is use some kind of universal upholstery trim. Now the top kit came with a big roll of item welt. So that's what we're going to use. Just lay it over the edge, nail it down, and that's it. Also going to cover this in sealer first, like we did with the sides. It's taken me two, maybe three days, to figure out how to snap on the outside of the gutter. Now, obviously, 
you're supposed to just put pressure on it and it'll snap into place. And I tried starting it at one end or the other and this one for some reason didn't want to start there. It wanted to start in the middle. So the way I attached it was I got the bottom of it caught and put both hands on it, put one foot against the bench back here, and then just leaned all my weight on it and I was able to snap the top of it in. After doing that, I can just work it on from there. I can get it attached on the bottom, take a block of wood, place it here, and then just tap on it with a hammer until it snaps into place. And now it's pretty much done. Obviously we still have to paint the gutters. And there's these clips that are supposed to go over here. I don't have those, I'll have to order them. But the rough workmanship is pretty much done. Well, that's it for now. The next big thing to do on this car is reconstruct the seats and start making the interior. And I'll probably start on that pretty soon. There'll probably be a few videos on that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.